Chomitz. I am the Classic Vacations Director of New Business Development, and many of you know me as the host and moderator for the Learning Lounge. Um, so we've got everyone trained already. People are telling us in the chat who's here and where you're from, so thank you so much for doing that already. Um, and thank you for joining us. This is a special event for Let's Engage, which is our Classic Vacations Group Leadership Team. Um, it's not actually a training session or a presentation. It's more for you, our travel advisors, um, to ask questions of our panelists and the classic vacation experts in our groups department. Um, so those of you that have already uh, sent in questions, thank you so much for your, your registration. Uh, we'll attempt to answer as many as possible. There was a, a huge amount of questions, which is great. And um, so we appreciate your interest and your inquiries. Um, so for those of you that are brand new to Classic, we want to share that we do have an online workshop every Friday called Next Steps. Um, this workshop takes you through the entire Classic Groups process um, and all the group tools step by step with a lot of insider tips and information to make sure that you're successful. Let's see. So for that, Chase and Kyle will enter into the chat box and you can um, click on that link and then, or you can go right to classicvacations.com slash no zone. So our panel discussion topics for today are the classic groups team, what are their roles and who, who they are. Uh, we'll also then move into the topic of qualifying your group for the perfect group solution, um, which will easily lead us into our last topic um, for this session, uh, contracted groups versus groups a la carte. So lots of questions there. Uh, with each topic, I will ask one of our presenters to do a brief overview as it relates to groups by Classic um, and then start asking your questions. So we also have Kyle, Brock and Chase Patterson in the house. So they are behind the scenes helping out. Um, Kyle is our strategic account manager in the Southeast and Chase is our new business development manager. Um, Kyle and Chase will be with you in the chat box, so if you have any questions, uh, feel free to enter them in the comments. Um, and if you have anything that comes up during discussion, please feel free to enter them there. Um, first, I would like to introduce you to our distinguished panelists um, and have them tell you a little bit about themselves, um, their role as it relates to Classic, and then I'm also going to ask them to share a passion, both personally and professionally, so you get to know them a little bit better. So with that, Melissa Kruger, we are going to start with you. Uh, Melissa is our Director of Sales and General Manager of Groups. So can you share a little bit about what your passions are? Yeah, absolutely. Good morning, Lynn, and thank you for um, you and Chase and Kyle navigating this for us today. We're super excited to be here. Um, so I am the General Manager and Senior Director of Groups at Classic Vacations. I joined Classic seven years ago, but have been in the travel industry, oh gosh, over 25 years. And Professionally, I, my passion really is aligned with making sure that our customers are successful and the people on my team are successful. So watching, I always tell my team, you know, your, your work is kind of, it fuels the life that you love. And so getting to know the customers and what's important to them and helping them build their business and watching their life um, kind of come to what they wanted it to be as exciting for me as it is with our employees at Classic. And in terms of the fun part, um, what, what's super exciting and what I'm passionate about I'm an avid outdoors person, so I. Um, some people are feeling super confined by COVID, but trails are open, and I love being outdoors and hiking. And I, this time of year is pumpkin bread, so I might have to shoot. <laughs> I've got, I have a, a pumpkin bread recipe that absolutely slays. So I might have to send a picture of that over to Kyle or Chase because people are going to want that one. So that's that's a big hot topic around here this time of year. Thank you. Perfect. Okay. Yeah, great for the season. No, we love that. So we're all about staying on, on trend. So that's perfect. So next up, uh, Jeannie Flood. She is our senior manager for groups. Um, so Jeannie, what would you say are your passions for both personal and professional? Hello, everyone. I'm Jeannie Flood. I've been with Classic for 30 years. Um, and so obviously, travel is extremely important to me, my team, and the success of our travel advisors, and making sure we have all the right tools in place operationally. So everyone can grow their business internally and externally is definitely a passion of mine. Personally, um, just like Melissa, I'm located in California. So we have um, beautiful landscape around us to enjoy all the time. So being out with my family and friends and enjoying the outdoors, especially in this time when we're confined to our homes and not being able to travel as much as we'd like to. Perfect. 
Go ahead. So the next up, um, Cheryl Green. Cheryl is our account executive in group sales. What is your role? And, and tell us a little bit about you, Cheryl. Uh, good morning, everyone. I am Cheryl Breen. I've been with Classic now 18 years, but I've been in the travel industry for 36. So bring, just like my other compatriots here on the panel, bring a lot of expertise to what our jobs are and how we can help you be successful. Um, my passions really, uh, because I'm a salesperson in my heart, um, it is really the cha-ching factor. You know, I think we came over, Marjorie shares his passion as well, when we came over to the groups department, it isn't just making one sale for a cha-ching, it's making a lot of sales for cha-ching, and that's what it's all about for me. <laughs> it's the big cha-ching. Um, my passion personally, I love to travel and probably the most exciting trip I've ever taken was to Africa where I got to do some uh, treks with gorillas and chimpanzees and that's my absolute passion. Um, so that's me in a nutshell. Perfect. Now those were exciting trips. I love following along with all of those that you've done. Some really, really fun trips. So, yeah. um, and last but certainly not least, Marjorie Sherman is our national group sales manager. So Marjorie, we all know a lot about you, but we'd love to hear for those that have, haven't met you. Let's hear a little bit more about you. Thanks, Lynn. Thanks team. Um, I am sort of the virtual feed on the streets, training, collaborating, answering questions. I'm here for you any step of the way. Um, I started with Classic 15 years, almost 15 years ago. I think I'm 14 years, been in the business 30 mm -mm, years, started when I was five. And um, my professional passion as staged as it sounds is really assisting and helping you be successful with your groups, especially in these crazy times. Um, I That's my mantra, that's what I wanna do. Um, so my personal passion, I love to bike, you know, getting outside. I love to spend time with my husband and my dog, Annabelle. And for those of you who know me this time of year, I'm extremely passionate about taking my football team to the Super Bowl. <laughs> yeah. uh, Marjorie and I are very aligned on football. <laughs> That's good. Did you mention your, your favorite team? Um, the Seahawks. Okay. So I'm up in the you. Pacific Northwest. Exactly. So perfect. Well, thank you ladies all for sharing a little bit more. And so um, for all of our attendees, for now that we know a little bit more about our group's leadership team, um, that leads us into our first question. So Melissa, um, there's two great questions that I think will kickstart things. So who is Groups by Classic Vacations and what makes Classic, uh, classic Groups unique? Oh gosh. Okay. So I'm going to tie that all into kind of one, because I really believe it's, you know, it's, it's what you do and how you do it and why you do it that really defines who you are. And I, one of my favorite phrases is about branding and it's your brand is the, the promise you make and how you perform. So classic groups by classic vacation really is how we perform. And um, that's a testament to the, the three ladies on my team that just spoke. Um, what makes us unique, um, I would break it into three, three areas for me and the others will add in their, you know, their opinions as well um, because they have, um, as Cheryl said, we've got a lot of years together um, in this business at Classic. But the first one I would say is the human factor. And you know, I'm gonna put that kind of in Jeannie's area first is she runs, you know, I think of her as kind of the godmother of groups and on the rafters and she runs our operations. But what's really important about it is that she empowers the team, right? So with that, our team is empowered to make decisions. And we talk a lot about being the hero for our customer. We want to be the hero for our supplier. And we want more often than not to say, if we can't do this, we can do this. Um, but also empowering our employees enables Jeannie and Marjorie and Cheryl to be super accessible to our customers. And I think that's a huge differentiator at Groups by Classic Vacations is um, we know our business is unique, how we run it. Our customer's business is unique, and but it can only be as unique as the availability of my leadership team. So I would say that that's the first um, key attribute that I think differentiates us from the competition and makes us who we are. The second is being a boutique operation. So. But there's all, sometimes there's a downside to being a boutique operation. So you can be too small and not have the economies of scale that you need to really do what your customers need you to do for them. So I would say that we're small enough to be nimble and navigate each individual situation and customer and their needs, 
but we have the backing of Classic Vacations, which is a larger company, and that supports kind of our negotiating power with our suppliers and also what we're able to provide to the customers. And then last but not least, I'm super passionate about our technology. Um, you know, our technology is uniquely developed and designed for the group's team. Um, my entire team has had a say in what is developed and what the needs are. We brought on advisory people um, throughout the industry to talk to us about what the needs are. And we continue to develop that. Um, we continue to only sell to the travel advisor. So to make, um, you know, to make our customers that much more efficient enables them, you, to grow your business, enables us to grow as well. So one of after the boutique operation and our technology. Perfect. Well, I think two of those things is actually a great description for our next question. So the human factor and access to our team. Um, Jeannie, you've kind of been called like the heartbeat and of the department is our staff. So can you share with us a little bit more about the group organization? Absolutely. So I am the people manager and all team members do report under my umbrella, of course, with the exception of the leadership team. And the team's broken up into um, three key roles, which consists of group sales specialists, contract coordinators, and um, group coordinators. And the key is actually really to make sure that we hire the right talent for each role so our travel advisors can be successful. Our group sales specialists focus on understanding the destinations, the hotels, and being able to work with travel advisors to find the right fit for the group. Our contract specialists who have little interaction with our travel advisors, but still play a key role. Um, work closely with the hotels to make sure that we're producing a contract that makes sense and it's easy for a travel advisor or the client direct to understand what all those terms and conditions mean. Mm -hmm. And then of course our coordinators, that's the long term relationship and marriage between the travel advisor um, and the group department. As we know, so many times a group's not traveling for a year out or 18 months. So it's a long time to work with a coordinator. So finding the right fit um, to work with a travel advisor and making sure that all the terms and conditions are met, all the reservations are accounted for, payments are collected. It's a lot of responsibility. So we hire team members that really understand customer service, understand um, accounting, and all the key pieces um, to successfully move a group out the door. Lynn, can I just add to Jeannie really quick? Jeannie talked about building out the team. And I would say that, you know, COVID aside, so 2020 aside, we've seen a lot of change in our industry over the last two to three, four years. And Jeannie's, um, through Jeannie's management and leadership, we've been able to um, be available to hire some of the best industry experts that became available, whether that's a group sales specialist or especially on the coordinator side. So it's helped us decentralize our organization. It's helped us keep some of your favorite people in the industry um, working, but working with Classic. And that has definitely supported our growth. Absolutely. No, that's perfect. Yeah, we do have a really good team and, and a lot of people that I haven't met, but I've heard nothing but rave reviews from a lot of your group's team. So it's really, really nice to see that we're expanding, but also expanding in a good way. So um, the next question we had actually, Mar um, this is for you, Marjorie, because um, you work with our sales team. Uh, one of the questions was asked, should they reach out to their strategic account manager to help with groups? Absolutely. However, first you want to reach out to our groups team with your request so we can get you started right away with a group specialist. Um, but your SAMs are there to be your partner, your advocate, make sure that you're successful. I have recently worked with our SAMs to, and that's one of my roles as well, recently worked with our SAMs in a special program called Subject Matter Expert Program where we took groups of our SAMs and we really trained them um, to understand our groups department, what we do, um, some of the features within our groups department. So if you're building a custom group website, we have some of your SAMs who are subject matter experts. If you're not understanding the management tools or you know, kind of the process, your SAMs are trained on this. So absolutely, you wanna reach out to your SAMs. There's other times when maybe you're working on with a customer and you don't know what properties. Your SAMs are well-versed in our portfolio as well, so they can help you narrow it down, help you qualify, but definitely start your request with our group specialist because we're all there for you to help you out. And me. 
literacy. <laughs> it's a team effort. So that's a really, really good answer. So, um, and we have a, a long list here, Jeannie, for some operations questions. So for you being the people Ready. manager, um, I've got some questions for you right from our registration. So uh, first one is, an advisor is asking, will I be able to speak with the same group agent throughout the process? Mm -hmm. So as I just mentioned, um, there are separate roles. For a travel advisor, they'll have a relationship with two team members, the group sales specialist that will help get them all the way from the initial quote process to a contract process. Once the contract's closed, then you'll move over to a contract. Um, coordinator, excuse me, a group coordinator. And that team member will be with you all the way until the time that the group travels. So two key team members participating um, in the life cycle of a group, but the right talent in place to help everyone be successful. Perfect. And then how would you recommend it's best to reach their dedicated group specialist and their group coordinator? Um, someone had mentioned they had called and they only got a voicemail. So can you mm -hmm. recommend what's the, the best way to communicate? Absolutely. So of course, email and, and a phone call are the best way. Um, with the phone, if someone's already on a call with a, another travel advisor, of course, it's going to go right to voicemail. Sometimes email is faster to see because you can kind of watch messages come through and know when someone's trying to get a hold of you. With everyone being remote right now and all of our phones being soft phones, you don't always see a voicemail pop in right away. So that email is the fastest way for someone to know that you're trying to reach them. But please feel free to call as well. Perfect. Well, that answered my next question. So I'm going to skip on to the next one. So um, <laughs> will my group's coordinator alert me when payments are due and when they might be in penalty? So we have a great communication plan in place. After the contract closes, we've created a line of communication to remind travel agents of key dates. On our side too, we also put those dates on our Outlook calendar to remind travel advisors. Together as a team, we work to assure that all those deadlines are met, um, but it's also important for the travel advisor to have pop-up reminders too, to make sure that we're all on the same page and we didn't um, overlook any important dates on that group contract. Well, perfect, and so you did mention Outlook is kind of the tool that our team uses, but what do you suggest um, for best practices for tracking group details, uh, liability waivers, and other things to make sure that agency is covered? Do you have any other ideas? Mm -hmm. um, if you're managing more than one group, a spreadsheet's great, just with all of your key dates outlined. It's an easy way to keep track of where you're at with each movement. Um, so a combination between Outlook and spreadsheets, those are the ideal resources that we use and we do share those practices with travel agents as well. Perfect. And Marjorie, I know you are kind of the queen of the group tools. Do you have anything you want to add to that last question about how to stay organized and on track? Yeah, it's, it's a great question because it's key to being su successful with the execution of your group. So, you know, and protecting your business. So like Jeannie said, make sure that you on your end, we're doing it on our end, that you're either calendaring your dates, you're putting it on a, you know, you're putting it on a spreadsheet, you're communicating that with your group leaders, you know, share the responsibility of the due dates and the, you know, keeping you out of risk with your customer as well, the group leader, the wedding couple. Plus, you've got a great group portal with us that gives you dynamic reporting. So you can always have accessibility to your, um, your group and what they have and what you need to do and when their payments are due. Um, just we have a feature called the travel agent statement. That's an aggregated spreadsheet that as you build your reservations, that spreadsheet builds. So you can upload that at any time. You can upload a, um, a payment report. So use, get to know two things. Get to know your contract. If you're uncomfortable with your contract or you don't understand it, make sure you reach out to either your group specialist or me. Let's go over it, especially if you're new and get to know your agent tools. As Melissa said, we're really proud of what we've developed for you um, and the accessibility of your group tools 24 seven, you should be able to really be successful with working with your group. So th thanks for letting me add to that. Oh, sure, sure. So um, with that, that kind of covers the, you know, our first topic for today's session, which is, you know, who is classic and how, are, how does classic groups work? 
So if you have any questions, feel free to put those in the chat. Um, Chase or Kyle, do we have any existing questions that you wanna ask before we move on to qualifying your groups? It doesn't look like it. Again, everyone, if you do have questions, feel free to type them in the question box and we'll get to them uh, when we do have little breaks like this. Uh, but I haven't seen any questions quite yet, Lynn, so um, keep it going. Okay, sounds good, so we'll, we'll keep it rolling. Um, so the next one, like I mentioned, is qualifying your group. And we do have a lot of questions that came in about growing group business and successful execution. So um, some of your questions about growing group business, and I'm just gonna kind of read all these together and, and we'll um, kind of summarize those, but some of the questions that came in, um, and maybe many of you can relate to this, but so um, as a newbie, what advice can you give about forming my first group? Um, what are best practices for building group business? How do you see things different post COVID? Um, how to build groups with social media? Uh, what are the best practices to find groups? Um, plus a few other similar questions. So before I ask the panelists, uh, we've got lots of seasoned group agents right here in our own audience today. Um, so if you'd like to share any successful tips that answer all of those questions about where to find groups, how to promote groups, you know, where do you see things being different after COVID? Um, if you'll go ahead and type into the chat um, and before you hit enter, if you did already, that's okay. But before you hit enter, um, just kind of type out your thoughts, answering one or more of those questions. We'd love to hear advice from everyone and then um, we'll compile it all together. But go ahead and enter in the comments real quick. Um, and then while you're typing that in, uh, we'll have you hit enter um, all at the same time. And it'll just kind of flood in the comments with a plethora of ideas and advice. Um, which we will um, put together and send to you in our follow-up. So um, it'd be great to hear from everyone. So, okay, so go ahead and enter your advice. In the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, we are gonna start with you, Marjorie. So do you have advice or tips for our advisors to build or rebuild their group business? Um, this, is, this is a great question, obviously, is as you all are build, as we all are building or rebuilding our businesses in this crazy time, we're your support system. So we're not always the one building that business from the front line. However, much of my advice comes from watching successful advisors and hearing their best practices, especially now. The key points of success that I see are, especially during this time, is number one, education. Um, become specialists, not only about the properties and destinations, but how to travel. I mean, that's the new thing today. How do we travel in what's going on today? So what are the current protocols and requirements at the airports, on the airplanes? Um, and then keep in mind that these protocols are going to change. So make sure you keep up with the protocol. So yes, it's super important to learn the destinations and know about the properties and you know, be able to qualify your customer. But what's gonna be key is sharing with them your expertise on how to travel these days. Um, plus, engage with your customers at this time. Um, and not only engage by promoting, it's engage, how are they doing? You know, are they thinking about traveling? I know you, you know, you had a great trip last year. Um, check in and don't be afraid. This is the biggest thing. Don't be afraid to ask for referrals. I see some of the most successful advisors, whether it's groups or FITs, they ask, their, they ask their customers for referrals and their friends and their families, and they build their business from there. Perfect, very good. Jeannie, did you have anything you wanted to add in regards to building the, their business and growing new, um, new group leads? Absolutely, well kind of, um, there's a lot of opportunity with existing groups. Um, so many hotels, different price points, there's not a large gap to get clients into upgraded rooms and even to upgrade transfers or offer air. These are all components that add to a travel advisor's commission. So when you look at the whole group and if you're able to get everyone to make a small upgrade at a great value, it adds to overall commission. Um, so it's a huge benefit for a travel advisor. So sometimes look within the existing business you have and see how you can um, grow the revenue for that sale. 
Oh, perfect. No, that's a great way. Rather than just having to go out and get more new groups, you know, it's just focusing on, you know, quality over quantity. So that's a really good Absolutely. piece of advice. So um, Cheryl, anything else you'd like to add for advice? I'd like to piggyback a little bit on what Marjorie said, because she talked about, you know, creating the interest and, and actually um, going after the business you currently have. The, everyone has a database of clients that they've had for years, and it's really talking with them. Like she said, don't be afraid to pick up the phone, ask how they're doing through the COVID timeframe. Everyone is doing Zoom these days, so you might even want to do a Zoom call with some of your best clients, just like we're doing today, just kind of chat about things and what ideas they have about where they'd like to go because we're all pent up in these houses. It would be great to think about a destination and inspire people. I also think that it's important to think about the network that you've built and where that network takes you. You may, you may be a mom that has kids in school. How about doing maybe a family get together during spring break? How about talking to maybe the baseball team and those mothers and talking about that way? Um, there's a lot of database information you can extract from your own clients to think about a group. And in most hotels, a group starts with six rooms and you start already earning complimentary ones. So getting a Pied Piper out there to really plan and think about who else they could bring on this trip, voila, you've got a group. Perfect, good. Well, that's a really well-rounded um, answer. But Melissa, do you have anything else you'd like to add too? As always, the team does such a good job. I think, you know, people really miss each other right now. And um, I miss I miss my I miss my customers I miss my work colleagues. Um, Lynn, you and I have talked about this a lot, and I definitely miss friends and family. And I think that we are the conduit to bringing people back together again. Right? Is that we can, if you look at the definition of marketing as creating a demand, we can put things out into the marketplace that show people being together again. So um, one of the questions we get asked a lot is like. Ugh, right now, right? Because there's a time a few months back when it would have just looked super garish and none of us wanted to go out there with the $50 a night price. And it, um, it's time. It's just, it's really time to let people know that, yeah, you, it, we miss each other and let's be together again. And so with that, um, and some of it's just a little bit repetitive of my team, but I'm um, looking at it on the macro level, um, get in shape. Okay. So it's, I would look at it like in kind of our timing of this series is um, you got a, you got a limited time left right now where you've got some bandwidth to do the things to get your business in shape. So what does that look like? What does it look like for you getting um, all the knowledge and organization that you want? Um, I definitely um, encourage people to go back to the learning lounge library and look at some of the group centric um, additions that we've had. Um, we have had customers talking about how they've grown their business. We've got customers talking about how to communicate and organize. So, so doing that, I think that piece of letting customers know what's available. Marjorie talked about protocols, which I think is really important, but there's a lot of, there's a lot of clutter out there. And our job as leaders, and we're all industry leaders, is to remove the clutter. So let people know this is where you can go. This is the airlines that have a seat left open in between. You know, Mexico, the, these parts of the Caribbean, let them know what it looks like. We're working daily to provide updates to you, but just communicate the simple facts out to your customer because then that brand association between facts and you as the expert, go, you know, that, that comes to life for your customer. And just, you know, once again, it's okay to market now. It's okay to let them know it's a good time to be preparing for your travel. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that's kind of a, a great segue into, um, we were just going to put a little kind of note is we've actually covered a lot of those topics in Learning Lounge. So some of them were, um, Chase, if you can share that, that quick screenshot of um, just some of the, the past events that we've hosted was um, we've had, you know, closing group business with Cheryl. She talked to, you know, this was right in the heart of the pandemic and, you know, in April. Um, and then we had um, uh, April join us and she talked about how she started as a group seller and then focus, you know, on her referrals and really, you know, translating that into FIT luxury sales. Um, and then we also did um, uh, three of our um, partners. We had two that were travel advisors and we talked about podcasting. And so podcasting, while it's kind of a fun um, extracurricular activity, they used it specifically to promote themselves, promote their brand and promote their businesses. Um, and so each of the speakers in that particular learning lounge event, um, you can find all of them on the, the link at the bottom of the page. 
Um, but they shared a really good way of not just how to set up, how to set it up and record it, but also, you know, how to plan for it, how to promote it, how to, you know, come up with the content and the guest speakers. Um, and of course, our own Lauren Brown, she did a whole hour just on uh, social media and how to promote your business and the difference between a page and a profile. So that's a really great starting point for those of you that had questions about social media and you know what is life like after uh, COVID you know, with groups and with travel. So I invite you to take a look at all of those because I do think that you will see a lot of um, more information and, relative con and uh, relevant content there for you, so. Lynn, that's a great slide. Can you make sure that the sales organization has that and puts it into their presentations when they're talking about groups? Because I think if we can, when we're out, you know, we've got a couple hundred people with us today, but when we're out in the world talking about groups, if we can direct them back to these are the, these are the group centric assets that we have, that would be amazing. I love this. Yeah, absolutely. And that's just learning them. You know, so this, yeah. this event, I think, is just a, a really great extension of that. So because um, there's so much we can talk about, but we, we limit a lot of these to an hour or less. So we, um, so I think, yeah, we'll absolutely make sure that's relative or excuse me, um, accessible to everybody. So thank you. Um, so Jeannie, next for you. I've got a great question. Just getting back to the basics. Um, how many guests make up a group and does it vary by market or brand or destination? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So um, rather than looking at how many guests, a lot of times it's more of how many rooms. So for a lot of our all-inclusive partners, it could be as little as six rooms where some other hotels um, don't consider it a group until you get up to 20 rooms. So yes, it absolutely does vary by hotel chain, by um, destination. And we'll go into a little more details about our group options in just a few minutes. Perfect. All right, and Marjorie, we had another question about what destinations do you see trending right now for groups? Well, the trending, you won't be surprised, the trending destination for groups are where the borders are open and where the destinations are inviting. Still majority of our groups being booked for 2021 and even 2022 are still in the all-inclusive resorts in Mexico, Jamaica, the Dominican Republic, Costa Rica. Mexico, especially I find as the tourist boards and the properties are really engaging with continuous information on what they're doing to invite your customers to their destinations, what they're doing to clean, you know, to make the customers really feel comfortable. They're, um, I know Cabo put together different phases so that you know exactly when the best time to bring your customers back and they're making them feel comfortable. Um, a lot of your peers are out there and on Facebook sharing what their experiences are, and some of you mostly are sharing your experiences of what it's like being in the airports and what it's like arriving in the destinations. So those seems to those seem to still be the destinations that are trending right now. Perfect. Thank you. Um, let's see. And Cheryl, I've got one for you. So as you work closely with the hotel partners, um, what advice do you have in choosing the best property for an agent's customers? Um, and then a follow-up question is, who are the best partners during the pandemic and why? That's a good one. Okay. Two questions. First question is, um, I am the liaison with the, with the hotel partners, and we are very selective when we have our hotels in our portfolio. We have a lot of criteria that we choose to say, is this a good fit for Classic, and is it a good fit for our travel advisors and clientele? Um, because we're considered a luxury wholesale partner, we have a broad breadth of product in that luxury segment. However, because groups tend to also have um, a different price point, sometimes people can't afford to go away as much as we'd like to be in a five-star experience, and they're looking for a little bit more of a budget. So we do have some portfolio of products that are not on our FIT division, but only through groups. Um, and that would be things like Ryu, Ibero Star, Pueblo Bonito, and a couple of others, the Bahia properties, the Oceans properties. So you won't see them necessarily on our website advertised on a regular basis as part of the classic product, but we certainly do a lot of them to group for groups. Um, the other thing is 
how we select them. You know, it's important if you don't know the product and, and the destination itself, is our sales specialists are very well versed in who our partners are and what might be the best fit for you. When we look at the COVID situation, it's been an interesting year, and I'm sure all of you have experienced this, not only for groups, but also FIT side, is which partners came to the table to really make it be um, easy to change the schedule, to change their dates, um, what type of penalties were they in? So all of those things we looked at. And I have to give shout out really to two partners in particular. One would be the Playa Resorts, which includes the properties of Hyatt Ziva, Zalara, some of the Hilton properties, um, Panama Jacks, um, and the, the whole image of them is really to help the consumer. And I was so proud when they said to me, Cheryl, we're gonna refund. And this was back in March when the pandemic first, first hit. Their first reaction was, we're going to allow full refunds. And I asked why? And their answer very simply was, because it's the right thing to do. And I've shared that philosophy because I think they set the tone for the industry. They set a high bar and some of the other hotel chains couldn't quite agree to that, giving a full refund, but AM Resorts stepped up to the plate and they did as well. They also offered things at AM Resorts like move the date, keep the rate and be able to have a free night on top of it. And now they're allowing refunds up to three days before departure for groups as well as FIT business. So I think those two partners deserve a real shout out from our, from our hearts to say thank you for making our life easier and to supporting the consumers and the travel advisors because that's what it's all about. It's building that business. And yes, you should definitely think about them the next time you're gonna do a group. Let's show them the loyalty back that they showed support to us. That's important. Well said. No, I agree. No, that's perfect. And so I've got a few more follow-up questions for you as well. Um, so an advisor had asked, can we request room categories at properties that you do not contract with? The, the categories, um, at Classic, we, we really tend to make sure that every client gets the room category they deserve and want to be in, whether it be a budget reason or whether they, they just like to be in the best of the best. I'd love people to be in the presidential suites and the, and the swim out rooms. And, and uh, it's important that they, the clients have a choice. So at Classic, when we do a contract and you have the choice of every room category, we don't do run of house at Classic and we don't put everybody in the lowest category. In fact, your, your sales specialist will work with you to say how, you know, who is in that group and what type of budget do they have and what are their expectations of experience? And then we try to make sure the contract includes different variety of categories so that people have that choice to sell up and sell into for the one that they want. It's very important. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, some of the hotels, you know, they have so many different categories. It's, it's our job to help the travel advisor and help the clients figure out what's the best one for them. Well, perfect. And I think, like you said, we can do that easily with our preferred hotel partners, but there are a few that are not preferred. So for instance, you had mentioned Rio, Ibero Star, and Barcelo. We can still do group contracts with them, even though they're not a preferred partner for FIT, correct? That is correct. Yep. And we do it all the time and we try to be experts on their products as well. Um, my team is also having um, learning webinars where we learn more about the product. So we can be more of an expert for you. Okay. And then another question is, you know, we've obviously at Classic have more destinations than just, you know, Mexico and Caribbean and just all inclusive. So um, if somebody wanted to have a group request for, you know, say Hawaii or Canada or one of our other destinations, how would you respond to that inquiry? We are trying to grow our breadth of product right now for groups. It's interesting because the reason that these places that Marjorie mentioned are trending is because traditionally they have been the best value. You can get an all-inclusive experience where all your meals, drinks are included and you're not being nickeled and dimed when you get down to a resort. So I think from a group standpoint, when you're, when you're positioning to your group leader, why you would choose an all-inclusive, to me, it's a very easy sell because everything's included. From a travel advisor standpoint, it's also important to remember you get full commission on the entire package that you're selling. So if you're selling an EP hotel with no meals, then you're only getting commission on the base of that room. 
So it makes a difference in your bottom line and your success as well. But I think from the customer standpoint, it's the best value. Um, are we adding more hotels on the FIT side? Absolutely. Um, in fact, we're, we're working more, and we'll get into this a little bit later with groups a la carte, but we are adding hotels and trying to negotiate. And that's, <laughs> that's the biggest part of my job is negotiating on behalf of you and your customers as to the terms of the contracts and um, to making sure that we're presenting a good product with com full commission for you, because that, again, is important um, that we present the best of the best for you. So one by one, you'll be seeing more and more hotels coming out there. But I think traditionally, it'll probably still be the majority will be uh, the value conscious uh, clientele that's going to want that all inclusive experience. Okay, no, that I think that's perfect. And then, so we talked a little bit about, you know, corporate groups and destination weddings, um, where obviously you've got, you know, the attendees and, and it's a little bit more preset, but what about speculative groups? If an agent wants to build a group or, or start a group, like you said, the Pied Piper, what do you think would be the best advice with speculative groups? Speculative groups is a very hard topic because the biggest challenge you have with a contract is making a commitment upfront for your deposit. If you don't have somebody paying that deposit amount, you can't hold space. It's a little different than a cruise. Uh, sometimes people are used to doing a, a group with a cruise and you don't have to put up much money. But in a land reservation, you do. Um, and some of our deposit requirements from our partners are $50 per person or 10%. But $50 per person is pretty common in the, in the all-inclusive um, group market. But still, somebody's got to come up with that. And so there's always that ambiguity of who's going to pay and are they going to materialize. So speculative groups can be a time waster if you really don't have the following or the, um, the affinity between the members of the group in order to make sure it is going to work and be successful. We don't want to waste your time and our time, but we're here to help you. And sometimes even just giving you tips of how to position it makes all the difference. Perfect. No, it's good. We got to start somewhere. So thank you for offering to, to assist on that. So Marjorie, anything you want to add on that, that last topic? Um, yes, yeah, spec groups, like uh, Cheryl mentioned, is kind of a funny animal. In reality, a wedding group is a speculative group because you don't really know who's going. However, they can be successful because of the event and the nucleus of people who are already planning on traveling. So if you are going to venture into that area, make sure you first have a nucleus of people that have agreed to, that they wanna travel, they're going to travel, and then you can build out and promote on that group of people. If you start from nobody traveling, you run into what Cheryl mentioned, you know, but you know, very few, it's very few materialized when you don't have that nucleus. Also, even with the nucleus, make sure you find your Pied Piper with a following and that of people that want to travel together. So once you have that nucleus, promote your group and see it grow. Perfect. Good. Now I've got a couple, um, uh, excuse me, I've got, let's see. Um, Oh, wait, actually, uh, Cheryl talked a little bit about this, about creating a room block um, with different categories. So if, we, if the agent doesn't know who's going to travel and how long they want to stay, what is your advice about creating a room block for the contract? So um, <laughs> many people know this is a passion of mine. We want to look out for our customers, obviously, with the room block, but we also want to look out for our hotel partners. So the room block's kind of a double-edged sword for social groups where you don't know who's traveling. You don't want to overblock because we don't want to be dumping a lot of unused space back onto our, pro our hotel partner's lap. But on the other end, we've created great tools for your social groups where you can instantly confirm so you don't want to underblock. So I have a few tips, and I know we're we're going a little longer than expected, but a few tips to do what I call a thoughtful room block. If you're doing a social group or even a destination wedding, right at the beginning, send out a save the date. A save the date that says, yes, no, maybe. This is a great way to start. You don't even have to have pricing. You don't even have to have the hotel. You have to have the destination and the dates. Who's coming? Um, once they have that, then you've got the start of it. Also for you as a travel advisor, know the, the guest list, especially for a destination wedding. Have your wedding couple send you the guest list. 
and their email addresses. And what's really helpful is their relationship the mother of the bride, the friend of the family, you know, because you can tell a lot of who will be coming or who might not be coming based on that list. And then have a candid conversation with your group leader, who realistically, who's coming for sure. Let's block those rooms. The other thing that happens is don't always I mean, read between the lines and ask open-ended questions. It's, it's been very common in the past where, um, where people will say, where the group leader will say, okay, I wanna block all the low category rooms. So you go and block all the garden view rooms and think of it, about it right now. Everybody's been locked between four walls. They wanna see the ocean when they go down to the Caribbean or Mexico. So make sure your block has the flexibility so that you can book into it for those higher end people within the group to book those higher categories. And one more point I wanna mention is be cognizant of who's traveling. I'll give you an example, a sorority group where they're all girls, okay? So you book into an all-inclusive adults only. Be it, keep in mind what, know what categories have double, double beds. I had one group who booked one category. They all wanted the preferred ocean view room at one of the secrets properties. And there were two double double bedded rooms in that whole category. So it wasn't even realistic to book them all in that category because they're all gonna be girls sleeping with girls. So just to, those are some of my tidbits that, and if you're new again, I those are some of the conversations that I have with you one-on-one -on -one if you want to have that conversation. Also, our group specialists have those kind of conversations with you too. But B, make sure that your room blocks are thoughtful. Perfect. No, I think that's a, a really helpful pieces of advice there. So, um, so Jeannie, I've got some really hopefully kind of quick fire questions for you on operations. So mm -hmm. um, one is, are groups able to pay with multiple payments, credit cards, different transactions? Absolutely. Um, our groups are set up where you can play with one credit card for the entire group. We all love when uh, mom and dad pay for an entire group, right? Otherwise, each guest can pay independently um, and use multiple cards themselves. Perfect. And then how, do, how does Classic determine um, deposit and payment schedules? Mm -hmm. Are they different than if they went to the property directly? So all of our um, deposit and payment schedule is based on the hotel contract. All of our payments are either tied to a payment that's due to the hotel or to collect payment to cover a penalty. And that's always really important. We always want to make sure that we have enough money in-house to cover any penalties and to also protect the travel advisor for not being liable. Um, and as far as comparing it to the hotel, our dates usually are buffered by just a few because we want to make sure we could turn that payment around in time to get the vendor their money. Okay, perfect. Um, and then regarding booking group air, um, what would you say would be the advantage or disadvantage of confirming group airfare? So group airfare, anytime you have more than 10 passengers on the same flight, we are required by the airline to obtain a group air contract. Um, since the majority of the business is destination weddings, you'd want to make sure that you truly had 10 people already dedicated to be on the same flight and ready to move forward. If it's speculative, Locking in a contract that potentially could fall apart with the group air um, could cost the clients that did want to book in more money because they didn't secure their own independent space. So you always need to make sure that you have 10 people ready to go. And it's not necessarily an option. It's mandatory once we have 10 people at the same moment in time ready to pay a ticket on the same flight. Okay, that's perfect. And then last question, which we didn't get in too much into insurance. So this is probably from one of our existing group um, travel advisors um, is our CFAR. We have canceled for any reason is currently for groups at 75%. So the question is, will CFAR cover 100% in the future? Um, currently CFAR will remain at 75%. Um, we've had, we have had conversations with our, um, with TripMe. And at this time, they're not going to be adding an additional tier. But if anything changes, of course, we'll let travel advisors know right away. Okay, perfect. Good. And so before we jump into the next talk, Melissa, anything else you wanted to add? 
just I saw a question pop up, um, and so I know that we've got a limited amount of time, but a question popped up about um, a family or a couple that wants to do a wedding, destination wedding, all inclusive in Europe. And I know that we immediately go, okay, that's going to be Mexico Caribbean. But Cheryl, we just had a conversation um, because Tangus didn't happen in destination. So our leadership team met with AM Resorts leadership team. Mm -hmm. And don't they have some fun um, merging of the relationship where they're going to be doing some more marketing of their all-inclusive properties in Greece and such? Yes, absolutely. There are a couple of properties already. The Ilkos Coast property in Greece is also all-inclusive. Um, Palladium has some all-inclusive resorts there as well. So if that is a passion for people, we might be able to make, make some of that work for them. Yeah. And I actually think that might not to be like, oh gosh, we're going to do another series, but I think that might be kind of just a fun series on its own, just kind of out of the box and with some of the European partners, right? Because going to Europe with people that maybe haven't traveled and, um, doing it all inclusive. We understand what the budget looks like for the clients. So, um, so whoever asked that question, let's make sure we connect after to have, um, see how we can support you. Perfect. Sounds good. So Marjorie, before we go, um, move into some other questions, um, we've got different types of groups. Can you share a little bit about uh, the different types of groups that Classic offers? Yes. And I think, um, Chase, you're going to pop up a slide. Excellent. So we have three types of group programs. The key is qualifying and knowing which program is the best solution for your group. Our team will assist. So our core group business is contracted groups. Depending on the property, it can be anywhere from six rooms to 100 rooms and more. 200 rooms. This is the way we are able to lock in pricing, concessions, and a room block. This also gives you access to our online group management tools, as well as a custom group website for your customer. You also get that dedicated group specialist and group coordinator for the life of your group. So the second group program is what we call, what we'll talk about more um, before we finish today, this is our fit, our FIT Flex Group Program, Groups a la Carte. Groups a la Carte currently comprises of select all-inclusive resorts in the Caribbean and Mexico. No contract, rooms are booked FIT, FIT uh, terms and conditions such as as little as $20 per room or per person deposit. Um, groups a la carte will allow your group to earn perks and concessions based on the number of rooms that materialize. Each property has different terms and conditions and restrictions on maximum number of rooms. It's all for so only social groups. And most of them are up to about 25 rooms maximum. And we now have a section in Classic Assist where you can actually download a specific property and see the concessions offered as well as the terms and conditions for groups a la carte. So the last type of group that is serviced through our groups department is our FIT groups. Basically, these are groups under 10 rooms with classic properties that do not require a contract. So they'll be booked FIT, FIT rules, all names required, and are not part of a groups a la carte program. The group department will service these types of groups if an air contract is required. Our FIT agents can assist you with these FIT groups as well, as long as there's no air contract or no, help, no hotel contract required. So if you're unsure, we will have one of our groups a la carte specialists help determine which might be the best solution for you. Perfect. Well, thank you for the summary. And it is a lot. So I'm already seeing some notes and comments that this is a lot for them to take in. So yes, we are recording. <laughs> yes, we will send the resources in the follow-up. Um, but, you know, I just want to make sure since we have your time, we're going to keep asking a few more questions that have come in. So, um, Cheryl, are you guys planning on expanding the Groups a la Carte program outside of the, just the all-inclusive resorts? Yes, we, we actually met with our product de development team with all of the different markets um, to have them have conversations with their uh, hotel counterparts and see what the interest is. We just 
um, signed the contract last week with the Fairmont Orchid. So they are part of our group Salda Cart promotion and they are in the big island of Hawaii. And we're hoping that the other properties start to follow suit as well. Hawaii has been traditionally a great market, but it doesn't have the value built in for the all-inclusive. So um, it, fits an, it fits a different niche and especially very popular from the West Coast. So we're very excited about Fairmont being on board and being the first uh, uh, to start the, the ball rolling. But we do have other properties as well that are EP that are gonna be coming on board, if, if not for allowing the concessions as Group Sell the Carts does, but even as an FIT group raising that bar. Um, traditionally, it's always been up to nine rooms could be booked FIT or the hotels required a contract. That's how it's been for all the years with all the wholesalers. So it's nice to see that we're getting outside that little um, threshold and being able to open up more ideas and destination hotels for our group market. Perfect. Now that's exciting to hear that it's expanding. So that's a, a program we've had for a while. So it's nice to see that. So um, Jeannie, I've got a few questions for you. So some of the advisors were asking, can they use their existing groups coordinator to book groups a la carte? So it's actually our specialist team that handles the groups a la carte program and they'll assist um, with those reservations. Currently we have two actually three team members focused on this segment. So not all group specialists um, are currently navigating through the program, but they'll get you to the right group specialist that can help. Okay, and then kind of extending on that, so if they have a dedicated agent in the call center, can they use the call center agent to book groups a la carte? Unfortunately not. And the reason being is with groups a la carte, there's concessions involved and our group team does need to be involved. Um, handle that to make sure that all the right perks are applied appropriately and the correct communication occurs with the property. Okay, perfect. And then how would they get started? If they've got a, a lead for groups a la carte, where do you suggest they start that inquiry? So there's two options. They can email groups at classicvacations.com. If they already have a group specialist, they can email them directly and they'll get them to the right team member. And there's also our um, group inquiry form on classic assist that a travel advisor can complete for any type of group, whether it be contracted or group a la carte. Perfect, sounds good. We'll make sure to share that link as well so everyone can find that real easily for their next group lead. So, um, so I was gonna jump into contract questions. We've got several questions about group contracts and Cheryl, I'm gonna send this to you first. Okay. Um, so what are typical payment and cancellation terms in contracted groups? Well, at Classic, we don't add our own. So we really are mirroring what the hotel provides to us in the contract. Um, and our goal is to try to make it as simple as possible, but also as painless as possible. So sometimes we have a lot more flexibility and we'll work with the property to fit the client's needs. Um, if, it's a, uh, if it's a destination wedding, we find many times that we need to push off a little bit on some of the deposit to try to keep it low. They may be you know, buying a new house, they have the wedding expenses coming in. There's all sorts of things that affect a bride and groom as they're trying to, to capture um, as many people to come to their wedding. So that's important to us. But attrition and cancellation are also extremely important. Um, again, if the hotels had their way, we would be in a lot of penalty right out of the gate. But we really work on that to make sure that it's palatable to, to the, the group and that it is fair. And so uh, we negotiate that very heavily. Most of the contracts, the terms of conditions are you're not in penalty till about 90 days out or 60 days out, depending on when the group is traveling. Um, within 30 days, usually it's non-refundable. We're trying to work with hotels on that as well, but that's a pretty fast and stead rule by all tour operators with all hotels, unfortunately. They want it, they have to commit to a block. And so that's, uh, that's the trade-off. No, and I think that's what's nice about the contract groups is it's black and white in writing for all the parties to see. So there's no assumptions of what the actual dates are. So I think that's actually really helpful. Exactly. Um, uh, another question is what happens when they lock in the contract and then the rates drop? I'm really happy to say that our partners always, always give us parity in the marketplace. Now, what that means is looking at the hotel's website they will give us parity to make sure that our prices are in line with what they're advertising. Um, with destination weddings, it's always tough or any social group because everybody goes online all the time to check rates. So what you can tell your client is if you have a contract, it locks in the rate from going up 
So there's no increase to worry about for the block that you've held. However, the counter side of that is that if the rates go down in the market, you let your group specialist or your group coordinator know at Classic, and then they will fight for the price match for you. The only time price matches are really ever turned down is if it's an um, if it's an off uh, if it's an online booking engine similar to Expedia, Travelocity, the online travel agencies. Um, obviously, they don't pay commission, so they're not really comparing apples to apples. Um, the other chances are we are always making sure that the room categories are there and we're comparing apples to apples when we're comparing the hotel's website. No, perfect. No, that's really helpful. So thank you for going to um, going to work on that because that does come up quite often. So yeah. um, let's see, I think um, that's all we have. So um, so Marjorie, back to the different types of groups, how would you decide for an advisor between a contracted group and groups a la carte? So of course, if you're unsure, we will, or our specialists will help you with the determination once we ask you all the questions. If you're in a peak season and your group wants to make sure that they're avail there's availability, the pricing is locked in, of course, you're gonna need to do a contracted group. And of course, um, corporate groups. Some properties will give you enough time to fill, fill your rooms, as Cheryl said, with the terms and conditions. Um, if your group leader, wedding couple, do not want to sign a contract and they don't know who will join them, or if someone is celebrating a birthday and they just want a bunch of friends to join them, those are perfect scenarios for groups a la carte. Perfect. No, very good. So Jeannie or Cheryl, anything else to add in regards to contract versus groups a la carte? We've done a great job with marketing, putting together tools that are now on Classic Assist. Definitely take advantage, utilize them. It's um, consumer friendly so you could share it with your client and they can take a look to under, truly understand what their options are before they proceed. And also for you to see what you have to sell for that client. Perfect. Cheryl, anything else? Um, you know, we, we always try to evaluate and qualify a group as much as possible. Um, I think we've touched on quite a few things of why, what makes a group successful. And it really is the affinity. It really is the nucleus that the Marjorie mentioned as well. I think from our viewpoint, you know, if it's a birthday group or just a girl's getaway, I think that fits more of the um, groups a la carte mold because you're just not sure if it really is going to happen and that way you don't have to worry about big deposits or worrying about tr attrition or cancellation. Um, if it's a wedding it, that that goes into both worlds because a, a wedding you don't want to have another group come in and take space away from you and if you didn't book enough rooms in the beginning you may not have people come into your wedding so I think it's really important to evaluate how many rooms do you think is important um, to really lock in and if it's if it's quite a few you might want to go the contracted route. If it's not quite a few, then groups a la carte might be the best fit for them. Okay, perfect. No, thank you all for your advice and for your time today. I know Melissa had to leave to catch a flight, so she's not here for the the, uh, the wrap, but of course we always go over our time, even though we've got so much to talk about. So um, as you may know, we are, this is just session one of three different sessions. So we all um, will return back in November. Um, so we do invite you to come back. So next month, we will be talking about our property partners, um, classic vacations promos to assist in closing your groups, um, plus the tools and resources that we have in promoting managing your groups. So you can register the original invitation. There's three separate registration links. So I invite you to go back. Uh, Chase also put it right there in the chat box. So feel free to register uh, to continue the conversation. So before we close out, um, Chase or um, Kyle, were there any other outstanding questions we didn't answer? Yeah, so we did have quite a few questions roll in. Uh, Cheryl, I'm going to direct this first question to you. You talked about some properties that we are preferred with, and I know on the FIT side, there is a difference between the Expedia affiliate properties and the class preferred properties. Is there a commission being on groups as far as class preferred? The, the classic preferred hotels, you should be making an, the commission that is based on your IATA or true number or um, CLIA number, whatever your agency's commission structure is with classic. Um, and if you're talking about doing an what we used to call Ian property, the Expedia affiliates that are not listed 
on our website with the words classic preferred. Those hotels are truly driven from Expedia. Um, and so we don't do groups at those properties. Um, there's again, a few ex exceptions, like me mentioned earlier, like Rio Ibero Star, Pueblo Bonito, just a few. Otherwise, if you're seeing hotels listed that does not say the word classic preferred, we can't do groups there for the majority of the time. But I always suggest to people, ask me anyway, okay? Ask me or your group specialist. Maybe it's a hotel we're gonna be bringing on as a preferred partner. Or maybe it's a hotel that we had a relationship years ago. Um, they're not maybe part of our portfolio today on the FIT side, but we can certainly resurrect that relationship to do a group there, especially if it's a real group, not speculative, but you know, again, worth our while to resurrect that relationship. It's always important to ask just in case. Awesome. Great. And then Marjorie, this question I think would be for you. Um, so I know we talked about Hawaii uh, being more open to groups. What about more destinations in Europe or Tahiti for FIT groups? Well, FIT groups under 10 rooms for Europe or Hawaii work. Um, and it can go if, again, if there's an air contract, it will go through us. If there's no air contract, you can actually do it with your FIT agent if you have a special FIT, you know, a dedicated FIT agent. Some of the Europe, Europe groups um, are more eight rooms or more need a contract. So if they need a contract, they need to come through us. And as Cheryl mentioned earlier, we're working on all the hotels and their terms and conditions and working closer with us. And what we're seeing, and I think Cheryl will attest to this, um, in this new time where we're all rebuilding our business, our hotels that didn't come to the plate in the past are starting to come to the plate now. So ask, like I said, if you have a request, send it in, reach out to us, reach out to me or Cheryl if you're, you know, if you're completely un uncertain and we'll do our best to be able to see if we're a good fit for it. And if I could add one more thing, um, we, we talked so much today about social groups and we forgot really to really mention corporate groups because we do a lot of corporate meetings and incentives. This is a very strong market for us, especially because in most cases, if you have a larger group of a corporation, they may be used to using an event planner and, and there's big event houses that they can go to. However, because many of you work for a travel agency who have corporate business individually, you also can handle that through classic vacations. The majority of our all-inclusive partners will allow us to use our wholesale contracted rates for groups and give you that advantage compared to another um, agency that might be going after it from an event standpoint. Um, we don't coordinate the events just like we don't coordinate the actual wedding. It's done with the uh, property event planners and the catering departments on property. And that's a separate contract. If you need food and beverage and you need private events like a welcome reception or cocktail dinner or a cocktail uh, reception, all of that is done separately. But I, we would be doing a disservice if we didn't mention corporates because I think it's a lot, it's very excellent uh, business. It is not speculative. The majority of uh, always travels. So, and the beauty of it is repeat business because we have some corporations that have gone with us every year for 10 years. And every year they look about where else can we go? So exploring places that are unusual. We don't have to take them to Jamaica and Caribbean. Uh, you know, we can go outside. The, 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 we have a gorgeous corporate group right now going to Greece. So it really, it opens up that avenue for where else can we send them. And we're trying all our best to get as many destinations under our belt um, with good relationships. So it makes your job easy. Great. Thank you both. Uh, and this one's kind of up for grabs, but as far as a group quote, how long is the expected turnaround for that after the advisor sends it out to the group's alias? Jeannie, you want to take that one on? Okay, I'll take that one. <laughs> so um, for our group quotes, we're actually going to the hotel to check for actual rates, what the promotions are, and true availability. We're not quickly quoting from our FIT system. So this really assures us and you that what we're providing you is accurate. Um, it, Due to COVID and a lot of um, furloughs and layoffs, it is taking hotels a little bit longer to get back to us. So on average, it's about 24 to 48 hours. I have seen a few things take a little bit longer going into that 72 hour mark. But again, um, the key is, is what we're providing you can actually take place. We're not just assuming that because there's a rate out there that the group can stay at the hotel. We 
truly know that it can accommodate your group and their needs because we've received direct information and confirmation back. Awesome. All right. Thanks, Jeannie. Uh, and Cheryl, I think I misunderstood the first question. Let me ask it again. The exceptions that we have on the group side. So Ryu, Ibero, Star, Barcelo, um, are those at their class preferred commission rate or are those at 10%? Yes, they are. They're at their they're at their classic uh, commission rate. Perfect. All right. Thank you for clearing that up. Uh, have a few other questions here. Uh, and again, this one's up for grabs. Uh, can you want to talk a little bit about air? How do we quote it? How do we hold the air if we don't have names? Um, so two parts. If it's FIT air, we absolutely have to have names um, in order to hold any space. If it's a group air contract. We just need a group name and ticketing usually occurs probably about 60 days prior to travel for most contracts, sometimes a little bit sooner for others. So um, two completely different um, scenarios. Okay, perfect. And Marjorie, I think this one would be for you, uh, but if we have an advisor who is about to go to contract and their contract is for 10 rooms, but they have a feeling it might dip below that 10 room minimum, what would you recommend there? Would they go FIT or would you recommend them to work with their group specialist to kind of figure out an alternative plan? That's a good question. Um, some, what you have to know with the property that you're contracting, does it allow the contract to go to below 10 rooms? We have quite a few, um, resorts, all-inclusive resorts that allow five or six rooms as the minimum amount of rooms for a contract. If it is one of those properties that are not preferred, um, we don't have any way to go below the 10 rooms. So it has to be 10 rooms and a contract. Um, if unsure, Again, Grips a la carte might be a good route. That's another scenario where they may want to do Grips a la carte if they really don't know if it's going to make the threshold for a contract. Okay. And then you'll have up to 20, 25 rooms to book as people book into the group. Okay, perfect. Um, and this last question, Marjorie, is for you. It's a softball one. Uh, group royalty rewards. Can you talk a little bit about this? Groups royalty rewards, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so we, if you know about us in the FIT world, you earn automatically earn royalty rewards on your FIT, FITs. For groups, it's a little different. You can earn tons of royalty rewards, but you have to hit the hundred thousand dollar threshold annually, and we apply your royalty rewards at the end of each year. So we assess whether. Um, if you've made 100,000, and then there's different tiers where you can earn different values, higher values based on how many groups have material, have to actually traveled at the end of the year. And then you have all the next year to use all those points. And you can earn, if you book a lot of groups, you can earn a lot of royalty rewards. Absolutely. Awesome. Thanks, Marjorie. I think those were all the questions we had. So Lynn, I'll turn it over to you. Okay, thank you, Chase. Um, and thank you all to the, our groups team. I know you guys are very busy with hundreds of groups um, in planning and in travel. So we thank you for your time and sharing. And we um, thank all of you, all our travel advisors to join us as well. We'll go ahead and wrap up the call. Uh, we will share out the presentation as well as the recording. So you will have access to come back and, and look through all of that and have access again to all of our groups team and your sales teams to make sure that we have all of your questions answered. So. Thank you again. We'll go ahead and stop the recording. So if anyone would like to stick around, we are still here. 